This story happened a long time ago, maybe 14 or 15 years. I'm a little fuzzy on the dates. I'd have to go back through the news articles to make sure, but I think it was 2001 or 2002. I was 11 or 12 years old at the time and living in a tiny town in the Florida Panhandle called Cantonment, just outside of Pensacola. I lived across the cul-de-sac from and went to school with a boy named Derek King. Derek also had a younger brother, but I can't remember his name at the moment. Derek and I obviously knew each other. He and his brother lived on and off with their father in the house across the street. I believe they were shuffled back and forth between parents a bit. He was also in a couple of my classes in middle school, and he played baseball in the same little league. So we were friendly. I always liked Derek. He was gregarious and really funny. He was also a bit of a troublemaker. Well, more than a little bit. He was always cutting up in school and being sent to the dean's office for being too loud in classes, or doing something or another to draw attention to himself. It was always fairly minor stuff, but the sheer quantity of his antics meant the teachers all kept him on a pretty short leash. From what I can remember, his younger brother was much more quiet and reserved, not a troublemaker at all. Derek had always been loud and brash, and in and out of detentions or the dean's office. I know some people at school thought he was weird, but who isn't at that age? We were 11 or 12, and everyone is a bit of an idiot when they're that young. But I admit I liked him. He was really funny. And if you can make me laugh, I'll be your friend, or at least friendly with you. We were never close, but we chatted in class, and we played ball together and always got along pretty well. Never had any problems with him. I'd been in school with Derek for a couple of years. While we were in middle school, we had a few classes together, and he had been in and out of his dad's place for a while. That was right across the street from my house. So I saw quite a bit of him, and was pretty familiar with his antics and sense of humor. He had a reputation, but I always considered him pretty harmless and quite a bit of fun. Around the middle of, I think, seventh grade, possibly eighth, like I said, I'm a bit fuzzy on the dates, his behavior started to get a little weirder and less funny though. Example, all the boys in school had a rumor that one of our teachers used to be a porn star. Total bullshit rumor, but she was the hottest teacher at school, and preteen boys will hang on to a rumor like that because it gets a lot of mileage. I think most of us knew it was bullshit, but it was fun, so it propagated like crazy throughout the school, and we all enjoyed the hell out of it. Anyway. One day in this teacher's class, Derek raises his hand and straight up asked her if she was a porn star. Obviously he got in trouble, but it was more than that. I personally saw him using the eraser of his pencil to rub burns into his arms. But not just random burns like smiley faces and stuff like that. Weird stuff. He also got in trouble at one point for using a teacher's stapler to put staples into his thighs and arms in class. Just weird stuff that threw up some red flags. But you know, we're all morons at that age. And we all just figured he wanted some attention. Which he probably did. Shortly after these incidents, Derek's dad's house caught on fire. And not like a small fire, but basically a raging inferno. I wasn't around to see the house in flames, but because I lived right there, I did see the aftermath. And it was pretty bad. When the firefighters got the flames out and went through the wreckage, they found Derek's father's body. It was a mess, but it was determined the fire hadn't been his cause of death. He had been brutally beaten in the head, his body and the house been soaked in gasoline, and the fire had been set, intentionally, to cover the murder. Derek and his brothers were not in the house and were nowhere to be found. This caused quite the manhunt for the missing boys. At this point, no one was sure what had happened. Had they been kidnapped by the murderer? Had they murdered their father and set the fire themselves? Had one of them done it and taken the other? No one knew what was going on. Derek and his brother were missing for a while. I want to say about a week, but it may have been less. And the entire time, pretty much the whole community is in a panic. 
looking for them and trying to figure it all out. Keep in mind, this is a very small, pretty rural town. Everyone knows everyone, and the community really came together to try and find the brothers. Some time went by, and eventually Derek and his brother turned themselves into the police and admitted that they had beaten their father to death with a baseball bat, and started the fire to cover it up. After the murder and fire, they had gone into hiding with a family friend. And this is really twisted. The family friend was a local cop named Chavez. This cop knew what they had done because they told him about it. He allowed them to hide out in his home. Not only that, but he began a sexual relationship with the younger brother, who at the time I believe was 11. Fucking disgusting. After a while, Chavez persuaded them to turn themselves into the police. Obviously, he wanted them to leave out his complicity and the fact that he was a pedophile rapist. But it all came out in the wash. To make a very long and complicated story short, the King brothers were tried and convicted as adults of the murder of their father as well as arson. Chavez, the cop, was tried and convicted as an accessory after the fact, destruction of evidence, perjury, rape, pedophilia, and a host of other things. And all three were packed off to prison. It turns out Mr. King, their murdered father, was a raging alcoholic, possibly a drug abuser, and abused his boys terribly, physically and mentally, and apparently kept them in living conditions that would be unacceptable for prisoners, which is, I guess, why the boys killed him. I heard recently that the brothers had been released from prison, and that Derek was attempting to live a normal life in a different part of the state. I even heard he was in college. I don't know if any of that is true, but I hope it is. I certainly don't condone their actions. Murder is unthinkable to me, a capital crime as they say, but apparently their father was a monster, and they were children, truly children, both 12 or younger when this occurred. They will always have to live with what they've done, but if they do have the chance to live free lives again, I do hope that they take advantage of it and do some good with their lives. Maybe that's wrong of me, I don't know, but I sympathize with them. I can't imagine how terrible their childhoods must have been with a monster parent. Physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. And then adult prison while still children. As for Chavez the cop. As for Chavez the cop, he will spend the rest of his life rotting in prison. So I lived across the street from, went to school with, and played sports with a couple murderers and their monster father. I don't know if Derek will ever read this. Odds are probably against it, but Reddit is huge and this is a pretty popular sub, so you never know. On the off chance that you are reading this, Derek, I don't ever want to meet you again, but I do wish you and your brother the best. I hope you can have some semblance of a normal life because you still have quite a lot left to live. And if you work at it, I think maybe you can atone for your sins. If you want proof that this story is true, all you have to do is Google King Brothers Murder. It made national and international news. There were books written about it. It was on all the major television news networks and newspapers. Hey guys, it's Sir Pence. What's going on? I just wanted to thank you all for listening and point out that yesterday we got two more subscribers. That brings our uh, total up to 13, which I think is great. Totally awesome. And I mean, I don't know. It's just... I'm, I genuinely appreciate all the positive uh, feedback you guys are leaving me in the comments. And just the very act of subscribing lets me know that I'm doing something right. So, I don't know, hell, keep it up. <laughs> but, uh, no, I really do. I, I'm enjoying all the positive feedback you guys are giving me. It's great. And, uh, I don't know, I wouldn't be doing this if somebody wasn't listening. So, hell, you're in it as much as I am, aren't you? <laughs> now, uh... I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling a little. So, I'm just going to go. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my older videos, make sure you uh, poke your nose through there and watch a few. And double check your closet door before you go to bed. You wouldn't want anything creeping out of there. Keep it spooky.